Greetings, ladies and mendigants, and welcome to this latest episode of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Out space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. The links to all the stories will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider subscribing. Story number one, Melody of the Heart, written by Uruwen. I remember shifting irritably with the human-provided chair while I waited. Though the Clorp didn't have an issue with the seating, my tail on Nakija's wings were hampered by the supportive pack that we were trying not to press our bodies against. The door of the room abruptly burst open with an echo that spoke of wonderful acoustics in the room. The human, chosen at random out of many who volunteered, entered, carrying two backless stools and an oddly shaped case. With a flurry of apologies, he offered the Akija and I a simple seating to rest upon before claiming his own space across from us. Opening the case, he gently removed something he called a violin and began plucking the strings of the instrument. As he tuned the sourness of the notes into something more pleasing, I confess, I held no particular hope for the exercise that was to come. It was a mere formality and exploration into newcomers' culture that all went through after having managed to contact other space-bearing races. Music was almost invariably bolstered with lyrics, and words always seemed to lose an intangible element of meaning in translation. Even so, I started the customary recording, a formality of a formality, as there is no sense making the newcomers feel like we weren't taking them seriously. As the human prepared for his performance, the claw began the usual line of inquiry. What relationship did the human before us have with his craft? How did he feel of what he played? And what was the nature of his instrument? I, having heard this many times before, didn't pay too much attention to the answers the human gave. Up until claw asked him to list the styles of music he played. The answer was far longer list than we would normally see though he did admit that he did have a preference for some others. One caught my attention, though, and my curiosity and presence of novelty was such that I asked for further clarification. It was called improvisational, clarified as one act of creating a piece of music on the spot. I found the notion curious, but set aside for later, zoning out once again as the rhythm of the Claub's questioning lapped at my mind. The gentle brush of the wingtip against my leg jolted me back to my senses. Later, when I finally managed to remember things like courtesy, I would thank the Okaja for alerting me to the beginning of the actual musical performance, as this was where I customarily took over the questioning. Could this human play a song used for celebration? He could indeed, though it was overtly simple styling. Listening to the words he sang, I knew that we'd look into what a happy birthday was. Could he play a song used for sorrow? He could manage to sing that also, though with an amused apology that he wasn't playing the correct instrument for the piece. Bagpipes therefore joined the list of things to learn about the later time. The song of a country, the song of finding a mate, the song of success. All of these, and more, were simultaneously played and sung by a human without a moment's hesitation. And then, oh then, I made a beautiful error. Something, perhaps nothing more than a stray particle of dust caught my throat, and I meant to ask if he could play a lively piece of music. Instead, all that emerged was, can you play life? I cleared my throat and was about to correct my question when I saw the look on the human's eyes. They sparkled with determination and the beginnings of a plan. It was not the face of a being who had been asked an impossibility, and I held my tongue. I still didn't hope for much. Lyrics were hard to translate, and with a deep breath, he briefly inclined his head to us, a nod, and he began playing. It sounded nothing like anything that we'd heard previously. The sounds were a tunnel, almost, an odd wail without rhythm. He rose and fell, repeating and picking up beat, settling into something like a breath, like a hiccup. Then I spotted the way the human stood before us. 
He cradled his violin in his arms much more gently than before, rocking it back and forth under the bow as he sat across the strings. No, I thought with shock, the sounds he played were neither a breath nor a hiccup. They were a cry, the wails of a newborn. The wading notes pulled from the strings slowly grew steadier, stronger. More notes were slowly added in a halting, uneasy manner that spoke of trial and error, of learning, and the shape of life gradually took form. The rhythm grew sweetly wobbly, and I could almost swear that I saw a child take its first few steps. As the music began to truly fill the room, the three of us began to get lost in the spell that the human was weaving with his music. The notes were fractal, kaleidoscopic reflection of ourselves, of our past, of our childhood, of our kin, of our family. The song child grew more definite, the sequence of notes became more certain. He had discovered a sense of self and had a musical passage to differentiate him from the others. The strain of notes, too, shifted and changed subtly as he learned more about who he was. Through repetition, a certain firm bounce came to the self-passage. The youth learned confidence. The solidity of the notes became a thing that stayed constant, almost jaunty, then abruptly it shifted again. The sequence of notes that designated the song child became longer, rising up slowly with a quick fall at the end. This new form completely overtook the old, and it was spoken with a yearning, seeking quality that I couldn't quite name. It was not until a different and compatible sequence of notes of uncertainty answered the calls of query that I knew what it was for, and as the two melodies began entwining with one another, I felt joy. The child had grown to adulthood and had found a mate. The happy pair swirled around one another, their togetherness expressed in the most beautiful harmonies and the music of an amped itself. Playful and joyous tones slowly mellowed into a soothing calmness, each song born supporting the other in a way so beautiful that I found myself wishing for such a thing in my own life. I sank into a mellow melody, Girling up into a couple's joy, but was shocked back to full awareness at the sudden arrhythmic zing of an unexpected note. A tense pause, and then the sounds of love turned fearful, the notes quivering briskly in a way that we had not yet heard. In a frantic flurry, the two lovers ran off in panic as a zing of danger, of a weapon, struck again. They ran and ran, and doing their best to dodge the shots of their enemies, at some point, they became separated from one another, and what had once been a beautiful way that they had called to one another was now trembling, chaotic, and terrified, shifting higher and higher in pitch as the tension grew. The horrible, destructive zing came right into the middle of a song, and she broke off in a horrible, high-pitched, screaming wail. My scales pulled together in the dread as she fell silent. He called out for her, his song mate, as strongly as he dared in the danger of the fray. But as his note shook with a lower quiver of sadness, my heart did the same. He grew quiet, sorrowful, his song broken now with the sobbing hiccups. With the rising wail and the wounded wilderness, the music still carrying the occasional zing sounds of battle, slowly and ceasing to tremble. When once the song child had been strong in confidence, the song man's strength now was fueled with rage. His tune began to ring out with a rhythm that could only be an exonerable march, his determination broken on occasion by the painful cry wailing of defeat before digging within himself and summoning the courage to carry on. They had killed his love, and they were going to pay. He was wholeheartedly at war with them, whoever this enemy was. Again and again he struck out with the cords of anger, and again and again fell before his rage. Their death cries only seemed to fuel his fury. The song man seemed unstoppable. Abruptly, his music line changed. His single note a half-step out of place, his injury caused him to falter. Falling down and considering defeat before his anger pressed him onwards to slay more of those who dared 
separate him from his love. More and more often the notes of his melody fell out of a custom rhythm, slowing him down just a little more each time. But they were ignored. The anger within him sustained his movement, pressing him onwards, forwards, until... Silence. A shuddering breath he called them all. He had succeeded in his vengeance. One last hidden flow struck. He had been prepared for this and launched a counterattack. Weakly, triumph soared as his final enemy fell. Too weakly. The song man collapsed to the ground, music wheezing sorrowfully, and each breath he called out to his lost love. And where once the vibrancy of life had made the call joyous, the broken melody of his dying self sounded so horribly pitiful. He breathed and weakly called again, quietly, so quietly that I could barely hear it. She seemed to answer. I held my breath, straining to hear as he coughed, wheezed, and called out again more desperately. But the same whisper quietude was all that he received. The hallucination brought on by blood loss, an echo of an earlier, happier memory. Or did he believe in some sort of afterlife? And this was her voice calling him to the eternal rest. His song grew weaker, unable to do anything but reach out for the fragment of his love, call and response. He was too far gone for harmony. A call of response, then simply a whisper quiet response. A raspy breathing, a heartbeat, weakening, slowly. A single soft note was howled, slowly fading away into nothingness, and I knew then with a dreadful certainty that the song man had died. I breathed deeply, trying to brush away the signs of genuine sorrow. As the silence of a finished piece swept over me, a glance to my left and right showed me that I was not the only one having such a profound emotional response to the human's playing. We were all in a state of mourning, feeling the loss of a being that had never existed, that had been given an ephemeral life on the spur of the moment, birthed by one person's mind and hands. We mourned, despite the human never having sung a single word, as he wove his music. It had been a melody, a melody alone, and that had moved us. The recording of that session is my most prized possession, yet I cannot bear to listen to it. My grief was far too strong the first time. End of story. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider subscribing. If you wish to support the author, there is a link to the original story, so pop over there and give him your support. If you wish to support this channel, however, there are a few ways to do so. The best and easiest would be to share this video with other people, as well as liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. All of these things tell the algorithm that this channel is at least vaguely interesting and that you may share it with other people. If you wish to support the channel in some other manner, watching my other videos would also help tremendously. Or, if you really, really, really like, there is a link down below to leave a tip or to join the Patreon. Any and all support is very much appreciated. And I hope that you all have a good one until the next time. And I'll see you then. Cheers.